Welcome to the 2010 Heli Expo, just minutes away from finishing up for the year. Make an exceedingly long story short, this is an industry who one way or another has had its ups and downs in 2009 was definitely the year where that particular expression came out in full force. But the best that could be said for 2009 is it's over. We were looking at the overall effect on the industry and one of the things that seems to be mollifying the downturn among the helicopter industry is the obsolescence of a fair amount of the fleet. A lot of machines that are getting a little old in the tooth and are either ready for replacement or rebuilt. As a result, there's been enough new business to keep a few folks kind of busy in the meantime and hopefully tide them over till better things start appearing, hopefully around the bid point of 2011, according to the folks we've been talking to, Rolls-Royce among others. Let's talk a little bit company by company and segment by segment. Uh, one of the most early and most eagerly awaited segments was Jeffrey Pino's statement on behalf of Sikorsky, $6.3 billion in sales phenomenal projects being undertaken, some reorganization uh, of the company according to a couple of initiatives on their part between civilian and military, and a whole new segment called Sikorsky Innovations. Innovations is all about the new technologies that they have been undertaking, of course, most easily typified and, and visibly typified by the extraordinary X2 coaxial pusher program. We're seeing some amazing things happening for Sikorsky, the most of which is the fact that no matter what happens, granted they're having a very good year despite the economy, but they are putting a lot of money into R&D. These are folks that are thinking about the future. On the other hand, we're looking at Bell. Bell, who has been sitting in the shadows somewhat for the Eurocopter segment for quite some time, is beginning to get some steam, is looking forward to the future, is seeing some real life out of the 429 and other programs, and obviously is, is looking to narrow the gap that's been built up over the last couple of years between themselves and Eurocopter. On the Eurocopter side, the EC-175 is getting a tremendous amount of attention. It's a serious machine. Uh, obviously introduced here uh, two years ago at HAI, it was something that kind of brightened some eyeballs and put Eurocopter in a portion of the industry that it hadn't covered adequately in the past. The Eurocopter EC-175 is likely to be a future superstar for that particular line. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system, with its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. On the smaller side of things, if you want to put it that way, let's take a look at little Enstrom. Enstrom had a horrible 2009, but was positioned to take on what it had to do. It built a handful of helicopters because basically it order book drived up when in fact the economy wasn't able to produce the financing necessary for the sales they had in hand. However, by concentrating on government and military sales, they have pretty much saved the company, if you will, simply because of recent orders from the Thais and from the Japanese that total 45 turbine helicopters, and that's serious business for a little company like Enstrom. They've got their eyes on the prize. They're looking very carefully at how they're going to be looking at uh, uh, government and uh, commercial markets for the future. They've not given up on the piston line, which they think has a pretty good future as long as the economy starts doing likewise. The bell of the ball, of course, Frank Robinson's R66. Who knew that years ago when uh, the little R22 came out, that this was the company that was going to shake up and rebuild the world of rotorcraft. There's no question in anybody's mind that this would be a far different industry if Frank Robinson had stayed at Bell Helicopter and been one of the worker bees. Instead, he developed the workhorse machine that became the backbone of the flight training market in the R22, followed by the R44, and now the $770,000 R66 RR300 powered five place machine. We're hearing from people right and left that this is the machine that they want. The operational costs are going to be uh, at least a magnitude less than they've expected in the past. And there's little question in anybody's mind that Frank's got himself another winner. We're looking forward to seeing what happened, although at the same time, let's face it, 2009 wasn't any kinder to Robinson and than it was to a number of other companies. With literally half of their uh, sales disappearing or half of their production sales disappearing simply because the financing dried up. The so-called stimulus money apparently didn't allow the bankers to follow through with the financing they had promised a number of operators. Still, 2010 looks good. They've got another 160 some odd thousand feet ready for our 66 production and they are ready to do business. 
If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. Overall, there is a sense here of survivorship. The industry is trying very hard right now to maintain what it has. They're looking at, once again, supplying and rebuilding uh, obsolete airframes. The 206 series has been out there forever and a day. There's a lot of rebuild, a lot of upgrades. We've talked to everybody from replacement uh, tail rotors on up to complete rebuilds. And there's a strong segment here that thinks that there's a pretty dynamic market for the next couple of years and just keeping older machines alive before the new market takes over again. Politically, rotorcraft have never been more valuable. We had an amazing experience speaking to some EMS operators out of Kansas City with a neonatal and pediatric uh, intensive care EC-145. Pam Grimes, one of the uh, ER nurses that uh, flies on board, talks about the passion of saving lives and that only a helicopter can do what they do and gives her the opportunity to have the best job she's ever had. But more important, it's the children that they've saved. When everybody looks at what happens to this industry, when it looks at the, uh, the way this industry portrays itself, the, the stories that need to be told, how helicopters are saving lives, improving lives, getting business done, at no time has it been more evident that the rotorcraft industry is critically important to the well-being of our economy, the well-being of our businesses, and more important, the well-being of individual people who in an, a time of crisis need a helicopter to get them someplace safe so they can be made well again. All across the industry, from flight training to EMS to pipeline patrol to offshore, helicopters are doing phenomenal amounts of work and doing so more cost effectively than ever before. And right now, this industry, shaken, little bruised, and so forth, is poised to look at 2011 as a point for new opportunities and an opportunity to once again strut its stuff and show the world that when it comes to getting around from point to point, nothing beats a helicopter.